Hi, I'm uh, chairman of ID TechX running this show. My name's Peter Harrop and I'm interviewing Intrinsic, which is a company that's doing some very exciting work, and we're going to have them introduce themselves. Okay. Good, good afternoon. I'm Robert Need. I'm the CEO of Intrinsic Materials, and we're, we make um, nano copper-based inks and pastes. So what, uh, what we do is we formulate inks and pastes for electronic applications. We place it on many different substrates. Um, where the business is today is that we're working with application engineers because although we make the ink and paste, we need to work with the total process of the application, dispensing, and the centering processes to put it not only on rigid FR4 type materials, but also flexible materials like polyimids. Um, we can go down to uh, one micron line width and spaces, which is very good for the integrated circuit arena. Um, we also work uh, in solar on glass, so if you think about the applications, our materials go on everything from fibers to uh, uh, solar to automotive uh, and all the other different areas. So uh, with um, the printing of copper, it's had a slow start like all new technologies. It's been quite a long time with some difficulty with well, maybe 10 Japanese companies having different solutions and some are physics and some are chemistry. You're physics, you do it with plasma, don't you? Uh, and yes. uh, I wanted to ask you really, um, why was there a slow start in adoption of copper? Because we don't really want to cover the world with silver as a precious metal whenever we print. Right, well that's a very good question. And the, the answer to that is that we have a proprietary process where we coat the individual copper nanoparticles and that protects them from oxidation until they're put in the formulation and use. Matter of fact, they're protected all up, up until the point that they go through the reduction process in the final application. So that has given our material the advantage of over the coppers that were used in the past. And I should say we, we, you know, we do this with more than just copper material. We are a, a nano material producer, a copper ah, producer right. of a lot of different conductive materials. Oh, I didn't know you did so, other materials too. <laughs> but, but when coming, just dealing with copper to start with, um, we read about how it has an advantage over some other metals in that you don't get the sideways creep. Is that real? Um, it all depends on the formulation. You know, one of the things that when I say that we're in the phase of the application engineering to help our end items is because um, the formulations have to be specific to the substrate. So when you talk about creep or weeping or anything that goes on on the material surface, we formulate it for the specific wetting capability of the substrate. Um, now what copper does is it's more robust when it goes through the centering process the individual nanoparticles are melted together so you get very good conductivity. We've, we've done as well as two times the resistivity of bulk copper. Copper is, oh, in the, wow. in the bulk wow. stage, yeah, copper yeah, yeah. is 100 times cheaper than silver. Yeah, yeah, yep, silver. Yep, yep. In the process stage, our inks are paced are as much as 50% mm. cheaper than, than, than silver. Yeah, but in so. comparative terms, sometimes the performance is better in terms of resisting sideways creeping and so yes. on. Yeah, well, yes. and also the similar true, metals. Yes. 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 yes, so when you place our materials in an yeah. application for ball grid array, um, you know, you're putting copper against copper ah, right. in the circuit Ah, right. So fine. You so you can... haven't got any electrolytic action or Correct. whatever. So yeah. that's a huge advantage. So there are some problems of obviously with copper can poison an OLED and with dissimilar surfaces it could give you electrolytic action. But is your um, dream or your view, your long-term view, that a large amount of silver printing could be replaced with copper? Do you, yes. you think there is a considerable pro opportunity or is this very much a niche of a niche? No, there's, there's a very, very large possibility ah. that we're going to replace um, silver in some applications yep. in yep. volumes. You know, the, the another area is uh, copper foil that use, is mm. used for copper cladding, yeah. um, rigid and polyimids or rigid and flex circuits. Yeah. Um, we do a additive process, which is, uh, you know, what you see here, as opposed to a subtract Much process. more elegant, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, you place, you place the ink down, you center what you want to keep, yep. and then you wash away the rest, as opposed yep. to what the industry does now. Yep. They start with a very thick layer of copper, Indeed. and they etch it, yep. etch it, etch yep. it down to get to the thickness yep. that they yep. need. And then they, they take away the parts they don't need. Yes, and I mean, 
although copper is a much lower price than silver, the price of copper is still an issue if you're going to waste a lot of it. Well, it's yeah. also a green process. You Absolutely. Know, we we, yes. we yeah. Absolutely. pollute the world a lot less by adding yeah, that's a good what you need versus you know all the chemicals that you go through when you're mm. doing a subtractive process. Oh, that's a good point. So, so what industry would mainly, uh, in terms of, I mean, your, your, your strategy will evolve in the light of the world you live in and what you learn, but I mean, what's your latest view as to your biggest opportunity? What is the spe sweet spot? Is it automotive? Is it medical? Is it space science? What is it? Well, it, it's, it's, right now it's emerging to be uh, automotive. Ah. Um, and that is probably when I use, I don't want to wear out the word uh, emerging, but they're looking at applications that um, aren't necessarily being, we're replacing a similar item. So you could replace a wiring harness with, uh, with a, a conductor on a fiber, for example. But um, whether it's in solar or displays to replace the silver that's in the bezel, um, some of the other heavy conductors, um, it's across the board. We're working in every area. We've got a dozen applications in evaluation right now with end oh, item great. customers, oh. and it, it is in existing and emerging markets. So what type of solar is that? Flexible solar? Um, well, it's also rigid. But mm. uh, yeah, so one of our materials is a nickel silicide, which is used to protect the, the silicon from the copper so that we can put that oh. down as a paste and use that as a contact. Oh, right, so, right. Yeah. Oh, how interesting. And the, uh, you described it as being on polyamide, and this is an example. That presumably is something that's quite commonly used in automotive because of the temperature. Right. So what you offer in automotive will often be on polyamide, will it? Um, it could be. Yeah. yeah. And it yeah. could be on some yeah. other substrate. Mm. Right. So, like I said, you know, where the business is right now is we make and we have on the market um, electrically conductive inks and paste. Where we are, where we're working with customers right yeah. now is to make sure that they're comfortable with the process yeah. to get the best performance out of their product yeah. um, as received or as performed, and then yeah. the life that they need out of the product. Yeah. And your so. plasma process produces a variety of sizes of particle, but do you see that as can be an advantage? Yes, yes, because as you formulate for different applications, you need a different mix of nano and even micro particles to get the consistency that people want for different applications. That's wonderful. Yeah. I wish I had your job. Very exciting. Yeah. Thank you very much, Robert. Well, I appreciate wonderful. The Tremendous right. company. Thank you.